Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm working on a photo that I captured in Madeira back in May when I was there on the Luminar Adventure. And as I was working through this, I started thinking about something and that is the, the most critical aspect of any photo really and how I approach and edit because my approach has really changed quite a bit over the years. I used to just edit photos and just kind of do things that made the photo look cool. Uh, I'd be like, oh, let me amp up the detail there. Let me do the color here. Let me do the pop the light over there. But I didn't really ever, uh, I hate to say this, but I didn't really ever have a plan. Uh, and so to use the word that's a bit more common these days, I wasn't really intentional about my edits. And as I've kind of matured, at least I hope I have, uh, in terms of my editing approach and my uh, thinking about an edit, I'm trying to be more intentional with the light. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video because if it's not obvious, and I'm sure it is, light is the most important aspect of any photograph because what is it? I mean, we run around with these little boxes that capture light. That's what we do. And so I, I didn't really think about it that way, though, in the past because I was just like, ooh, look at this cool thing I can do. And while there are a lot of cool things you can do, and I love to do them, and I'm going to keep doing them, I'm trying to be more intentional and more specific and more targeted with my light. That's what we're talking about in this video. Let's get into it. Here's my photo. I've done no edits. The only thing I've done so far is straighten it because like all my photos, it was crooked. I'm going to open Develop Raw and what I want to do is uh, start manipulating the light. I always start in Develop Raw. My one-two punch is Develop Raw Super Contrast. So I'm in Develop Raw and here's something else that I like to do as I'm becoming more intentional with the light is, you know, the histogram will tell you kind of what's going on with the light, you know, surprise. Um, that's not news to anybody, but I will admit I usually, uh, and for years, and there's, I don't think anything wrong with this approach, but I've usually just looked at the photo and said, hey, I like that edit, therefore I'm happy with it, or it's a good edit, or whatever it is. But I didn't always look at the histogram. Like, if the edit looked the way I wanted it to look, but the histogram wasn't, you know, perfect, um, I would say, who cares? And I still kind of feel that way, but I am starting to use the histogram more as kind of a guide, uh, because hey, it represents the balance of light or the distribution of light in a photo, and it's a great indicator of kind of what your overall exposure may look like. So I'm going to bring up the exposure here, and I'm also going to bring up the shadows a little bit, and I'm just kind of brightening this thing overall. And now you're looking at the highlights, and I can bring these all the way down, and it's still kind of blown out. And in fact, it's so blown out, I've hit the J key, even with highlights at negative 100, it's blown out. That's okay. Um, I kind of don't care. And that's another thing that's changed with me is that I used to always want this perfectly balanced light everywhere. I no longer feel that way and I no longer really edit that way. I just, uh, again, I want to edit to please myself, but I want to enjoy what I'm doing and have something that looks like a good photo. And if there's some imperfections like blown out areas, that's okay. It can still be a beautiful photograph. And so my approach has kind of changed. Now I'm going to type in the number here because I am going to warm this up a little bit. So I'm going to do that, and a tint, I'm going to leave where it is, and I'm going to give it a little bit of vibrance, just a little bit, and a little bit of sharpening. I tend not to do very much in vibrance or color in develop, simply because there are other tools that I would rather do that with. But also, more importantly, um, as you adjust the light and change contrast, which we're going to be doing throughout this edit, you do impact the way the colors look. So I never do colors early. I prefer to kind of do my color grading towards the end of my edit. So before, after, getting there, coming a long way, I'm going to pull that down just a tiny bit more. And uh, I think I'm done with Develop Raw. Now I'm going to go into Super Contrast and go ahead and set up this one the way I want it to look. Okay, so here is my uh, adjustments in Super Contrast. Before and after, absolutely love this tool. It's why it's number two for me in my editing stack. It almost 100% of the time comes second for me. Highlights, midtones, shadows, separate those areas, adjust contrast in each, and you get a really nice look overall to the contrast in the photo. Now, we're going to be working on light on, on, in this video and on this photo, and the other thing that I'm thinking about as I'm being intentional with my edit is that the sky is a little bit too bright, and so I go into develop, and I go into develop a lot when I'm editing, and here I'm going to get a linear gradient, and what I want to do is just kind of bring this down, and I want to fade it, something like that, across my photo, Lift that a little bit higher, and then I just want to drop that exposure a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit uh, darker, so you know maybe something like that. I think that looks nice. 
I'm also going to make it slightly cooler and probably add a little bit of tint. So maybe about a 15 or so. Now, if you look at that area before, quite a bit brighter and now a little bit darker. I see a couple of spots. I'm going to get those out here in a second. But that's giving me better control over the light. And that's why I'm always thinking about it and working through it as I go through my edit. Now, let me get those spots out of here and then we'll jump into the next section. Okay, dust spots removed. I love that automatic feature in uh, Luminar. This is fantastic. Now, uh, again, going on the light, and remember that section is blown out where the sun is, right? Hit the J key to see the areas that are blown out, which are in red. The ones in blue are completely black. Um, I don't mind to have a little red and a little blue in my photos. I don't want a ton. I don't want the whole sky to be blown out, but a little bit like that doesn't bother me. And here's a trick that I like to use to adjust the light and kind of lean into that problem, if you will. And that is a radial gradient that says right over here. And what I want to do is make it kind of big and kind of wide and kind of tilted because I'm kind of working on that sun and the glow of that sun. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make it look the way I want it to look. So for me, that is a radial gradient, something like that. And I'm going to go a little bit brighter. So I'm basically saying here's more light in that area. I'm also going to increase contrast a little bit. And I'm also going to increase the temperature and the tint just a little bit. So like a two there and maybe a seven or eight here. It's really just a small adjustment. But if you look at the before and the after, it has a little bit of warmth a little bit of uh, obviously brightness, which is kind of leaning into that blown out area, but it's a nice little trick that I think helps accentuate the mood. Also, if you look at it, the before there, the area that's blown out is that really small area. So to me, that looks worse. And now as I brighten that, it really looks like it's adding that glow, which I like. So speaking of glows, I'm gonna copy this mask. No sense recreating it. So I'm gonna copy that mask. I'm gonna close this tool. And now I'm going to go into the glow tool and I'm going to just paste that mask. So mask, mask actions and paste. So if I click on show, same mask from the other tool, I just duplicated it over here on this tool. And what I want to do is use this soft focus and I'm going to go to about a 15. And I think I'm going to go a little bit less on the brightness. So maybe something like that. And if you look at the before and after before, and after, again, playing with the light, accentuating the problem in the photo, which is really, I'm just making it brighter and I'm making it a bit more obvious that that light is beaming in from the side, kind of out of frame. And so I'm just kind of adding to that uh, overall look. Now, having done that, you can see that we've come quite a ways on the light and a bit on temperature as well, right? We've made it quite a bit warmer and quite a bit brighter uh, before and after, right? So. We're getting there, but we're not done. We got a bit more to do. Now, I'm gonna use a tool that you may not think of as a tool for light, but that's Structure AI. And what I wanna do is add a little bit of that structure to this foreground because I like that rock, uh, all those rocks and that sand to have a little bit of crunch, and Structure is perfect for that. But the reason I'm talking about this as part of the light adjustments is because if you look at the before and after, before and after, it's actually brightening the area too. And I talk about this quite a bit when I use Structure AI. So just be careful because it does brighten the area. The reason I bring that up is because the next thing I wanna do is actually darken the foreground a little bit, but I wanted to do Structure first because I knew that would brighten it. So I didn't wanna darken it and get it the way I wanted it to look and then add Structure which would brighten it. So instead, I'm adding Structure and it made it a little bit brighter, but now that I'm done with that, I can come in and get another mask, Linear Gradient, and I'm coming from this side here, and I'm gonna fade that kind of into this area, move that down a little bit, and all I'm doing is just kind of shaping the light and kind of uh, hopefully removing any kind of visual distraction from the image because things that are brighter or more detailed or more, or I can't even say it, or more colorful will draw the viewer's eyes. So I'm darkening that bottom left corner so as not to draw your attention away from what I consider the subject, right? Some of that seaweed laying on that rock, and to me, it kind of goes, and then kind of your eye kind of goes to the light. So I did this darkening after I did structure because I was coming uh, overcoming some of the brightening that structure provides. Okay, so done with that, but I'm back in develop again, and that's a key thing is I'm always using develop because it's just so good. It's really the best tool in Luminar, and you can use it again and again and again to go make adjustments to different parts of the photo. In this case, I'm gonna highlight 
some of these items and I want to basically uh, use object select to grab all this stuff. Let me just take my time, go through here, get all these things. There you go. I've got all that. And what I'm going to do is come in here and I'm going to increase that exposure a little bit. So you don't want to go too much and make it too obvious, but a little bit brighter and maybe a tad bit warmer, like a one and maybe like a 20, 25 over here to give it a little bit of that tint that uh, is kind of in the uh, in the sky. All I'm doing is, if you remember the radial gradient that was over here in the sky, in the sky uh, and around that sun, it was kind of, I tilted it so that it's kind of facing these rocks. So I'm drawing that light to these rocks. So as a result, I'm now brightening the rocks, making them a little bit warmer because the sun is shining on them. Sun is warm, sun is bright. So these are a little bit warmer, a little bit brighter. Before and after, just again, drawing attention to those because it's really the core subject in the photo. And if you look at this before and after, we've come a long way on the uh, in the light. And now I'm gonna go into color harmony, which believe it or not, actually impacts the light as well. Everything that I'm doing literally impacts the light here. There's not a tool that I'm using in this video that's not impacting the light in some way. That's why I said it's the most critical aspect, which again is obvious, but when you start kind of slowing down and being intentional about what you're doing and thinking about it, many of these tools, not every one, but many of the tools in Luminar will impact the look of the light. So I, I did a little bit of cooling overall, and what I want to do now is go into color balance, one of my favorites, and I want to add a little bit of blue into the shadows. So if you look at that before and after, it made it darker, changing the light, right? So before and after, and now I'm gonna go into midtones, and I'm gonna get a little bit of red in the midtones, like a three, and then the highlights, I'm gonna add a little bit of red as well, like an eight or nine. And that is uh, just impacting the overall look of the photo, before and after, before and after. And in fact, I think I might pull that eight down and maybe make that a six. I'm just trying to warm it up a little bit overall, even though up here I did a little bit of cooling, and that's something I typically do playing the cooler and warmer colors off of each other, trying to create a little bit of that color contrast or you know tension, if you will, in the photo. But this is color harmony, and despite the fact that it's all about color, I'm impacting the light before and after. Now, another tool that I love to use that adds a lot of beautiful mood to a photo like this that's already kind of moody, I think, is mystical. I adore mystical. I use it a lot. And in this case, I'm gonna move it up here, like say 35 or 40. Let's say, let's go with 40. And if you look at that, it definitely impacts the light. The dark stuff is getting darker. The bright stuff is getting brighter. So before and after, before and after. I like what it does to the dark stuff. I don't like what it's doing to the brighter parts because I kind of had the light the way I wanted it over there in the sun after doing all the different things that I did. So there it is before. Now it's a bit more blown out. I don't like it. Well, there's a beautiful mask that's made exactly for that kind of thing, and that's a luminosity mask. As the name implies, it's a light-based uh, mask, right? A mask based on light values, and you can isolate the different uh, tonal areas. So I'm going to come in, and all those areas that were kind of getting blown out, which is basically the sky and some of the reflection of that, I'm taking the mask out of that. I'm going to fade it a little bit, so maybe something like that. And now I've been able to put this adjustment for mystical just into the midtones and the shadows and leave it out of those highlights. So if you look at the sky over there, before, after, before, after, not a single change to the sky because the luminosity mask lets me isolate the darker areas, midtones and shadows. So if you look at the midtones and shadows, which is the mountains, the rocks, and most of the beach, before, after, that gives a little bit of that kind of mystical look, but I didn't need it in the sky. And in fact, I'm going to reduce it a little bit overall, maybe to a 35, but it's impacting the light once again, before and after. But a luminosity mask with mystical in a situation like that gives you that control so you can leave it out of those bright parts because it was making them too bright. And the last tool, just to wrap this up, is a vignette, which is quite obviously about the light. It's also about attention, right? It's where are you putting the viewer's attention and I want to choose subject, which is going to be right over here, just kind of a little bit below the center of the photo. So it's going to be like the top edge of that second rock. And I'm going to add a little bit of inner light. So slightly brightening that area and making some darkening around the edges, maybe something about like that. Just creating a little bit more drama, a little bit more interest, but definitely shaping the light with the vignette tool. 
before and after. It's a lot more obvious. When you sit here and stare at it after it's on, it's kind of hard to tell what's happened. But when you look at it before, it's like, oh, okay, that center is definitely not as bright as it is now that I have the vignette on. So great way to shape the uh, light, which is all of this is about drawing the viewer's eyes to the subject matter and kind of taking care of the, the visual journey that your viewer has in your photo. So that is all about the light. And that's not every tool that I use for the light, but these are the tools that I use very commonly for the light. And the tools can be things like develop and develop and develop, but also glow, structure, color tools, vignette, mystical, and all the different kind of masks, radial masks, linear gradients, luminosity mask. All of it comes into play to help you shape the light. Take something that's really dark with a little bit of blown out stuff and turn it into a bit more of an interesting mood, overall warmer photo, and certainly a lot more visual impact compared to how we started. That was the uh, that was the gist of this video, my friends. I appreciate you guys watching. Any questions that you have, leave those down below. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves, and until next time, thanks for watching, and adios.